guys, so today we're just gonna do a kind of casual chat to get ready with me video. I've got a couple things I wanted to update you on and I'm getting ready to film all of sort of my Best of Beauty 2019 videos. I've got three of them planned, but I wanted to actually have a video um, with me applying some of my favorites for this year and some ones that maybe you haven't seen me apply yet on my channel. Things maybe I've talked about but haven't done a full like get ready with me video using. So some of these I may have used in videos, but I think a good portion of these I was selecting so that you could see them on my face as I get ready with you and kind of update you on kind of just some life stuff. I'm a little stuffy today and my nose is a little red because I have been blowing it. I feel like I'm that like maybe the teensiest drip of a cold, nothing like too bad, but enough that I'm like snotty and having to blow my nose. So we're gonna have to deal with some of the redness kind of on my face today. And so I actually picked a foundation foundation from Pacifica. This is their all light clean foundation. Um, it says it's anti-shine and a satin finish. I find this to be a good medium coverage, natural finish foundation. It does leave my skin with a little bit of glow, but not like too, too much. So let's, I have a lot of filming today to do because I've got, beyond this video, I am filming the uh, beauty favorites videos next. And then I also need to film two more videos today. So today is going to be a five video day. And that is kind of a, that's a lot for me. I usually kind of max out at three or four, but that's part of one of the updates I have is um, I have a lot of travel in December planned. Um, some for work, some for personal. And when I looked at my calendar, given the fact that we just had people here for Thanksgiving and when I'm gonna be traveling for work, which is actually over some weekends, which is when I do some of most of my filming, if not all of my filming, all of a sudden I had very few days in which to film to get any videos out this month at all. And so I really need to get these all done here because I need to have basically next the next two weeks of videos ready to go while I'm gone so that I can take all this footage with me and edit it. It's one of the things of juggling YouTube and work that I feel like I have a pretty good handle on sometimes and then other times I look at the calendar for everything that needs to happen over a period of time and I go holy manoli it is the perfect storm of travel so that is brewing here and December is going to just be a complete race to the finish line as it relates to works kind of exploding, personal life is kind of exploding, need to get Christmas presents done. In theory, this is the weekend I probably should have put up Christmas decorations. I have not done any of that yet. I may try and do that tomorrow night, which is a Monday night, and just see if I can crank that out because last year, Things kind of got away from me for similar reasons for travel, and I didn't get any Christmas decorations up, which is kind of crazy for me. I love Christmas. I um, I think it's just a happy time of the year, and I love decorating for Christmas. So for me, last year, not putting up any Christmas decorations was just like, it was a little sad when I was home to appreciate how sad it was and the fact that nothing was there. Um, so I don't wanna have that happen again this year, but it means I've once again gotta cram every possible minute of every possible day into getting everything done. And life is always busy, but for some reason this month of December looks about as crazy as it's ever been. Now, the nice thing is, is that the Christmas time for us is because we don't have any family in town per se and we get Kaylee for the new year versus Christmas. Kaylee's my stepdaughter um, and she doesn't live in town by us so it's not super easy for us to like get her for just like an hour or two on a particular day. She lives um, several hours away. So anyway, what we do is my husband and I, our Christmas present to each other is to go to um, Phoenix. We go to Scottsdale and we stay at the resort that we got married at, which is the um, Camelback Inn. 
uh, in Scottsdale, it's a JW Marriott property. Well, let's pause real fast, I'll come back to that story. Um, so that's my skin. I think it's actually really glowy and healthy. This is very serum-like, um, so I think it's satin finish is definitely true. I think it's natural slash satin. Um, you've got a little bit of a glow, but it's not like the glowiest foundation, but it makes my skin look really nice. It's super smoothing, plays really well with texture, plays really well with dry spots, wore really well on me when it was nice out. So yeah, I really liked this one. I'm gonna go ahead and use my e.l.f. Flawless Concealer. I have the shade Light Peach, and this one is more of a radiant finish concealer, and it's a little uh, darker. It's like pretty much my skin color as opposed to brightening, which, or lightening rather, which is my preference for concealer because I feel like it hides some of the darkness underneath my eyes better when I'm not trying to both lighten and cancel darkness. And I just am not a huge fan of that, like, I don't know, raccoon eye kind of look that you can get sometimes. I'm gonna do a little bit of spot concealing and just set the, let it sit for a second. Plus the nice thing about using a concealer that is close to your uh, skin color, or is your skin color rather, is you can use it underneath your eyes. And I still feel like it brightens, right? It, it did its job, it conceals, but I can also use it on my face. So anyway, what I was saying is we are gonna go out to Phoenix, hang out at the resort for Christmas. We're out there for about a week. And while we're there, I'm just going to relax and read. And I kind of have some like, I don't wanna say, like nothing too extreme, but some soul searching I wanna do in terms of my channel, in terms of the repeat content that I'm putting out on a monthly basis. I wanna kinda of do a little bit of soul searching about how I feel like my budget process for this year has been. I didn't start it in January of 2019, I think I started it April, if I remember correctly. So I haven't done it for a full year yet, but it, I feel like now is a good time to kind of reflect on how that's been going for me, what I wanna do with my channel in 2020, what I want my upload schedule to be like, because I feel like I've attracted a whole bunch of people who really enjoy my declutter videos, a whole bunch of people that enjoy drugstore content, but I mean, here's the thing. Ultimately, this channel is a um, hobby for me and I've talked about that in other videos. And so I, I, there are probably things I could do to like niche down, which is what everyone always recommends you do if you wanna grow your channel. Find a particular topic that you want to stand for. And I, and I think there's an element of truth to that, I have seen channels who have a very clear niche grow more rapidly than mine has. But at the same time, I'm like, this channel is kind of, it's something that I'm glad people are enjoying. I'm glad people are following me. I've definitely seen my channel grow, but I'm also doing this for me and how I want to shop and buy makeup and how I, the things that I'm interested in playing around and doing. And that's a combination of doing hauls and drugstore plus high-end plus other content and get ready with me etc and i just i need to do a little bit of soul searching about the kinds of content i think you guys are enjoying the most just looking at the views because um, based on views there's definitely styles of videos that you guys prefer over others which is totally normal and fine i don't mean to sound like weird about that, but I also want to spend a little bit of time trying to really think about what I might be doing um, that I need to change or things. Actually, what it is is I need to do an exercise that I used to do with my team when I worked at DSW and I would bring my team together and once a year and they had a bunch of different disciplines um, in terms of like one group was responsible for IT and one group was responsible for visual merchandising and the other one was communications and operations and new store openings. And so I would bring all my team together in all their different areas and I would do something we called start, stop, continue. And it was basically like, what things should we start doing that we're not doing now? So let's let's talk about what we think our stores need. What do we think our store operations team needs? What does the home office need from us? For those of you who might be slightly lost, at the end of my time at DSW, um, at their home office, I ran store operations for them. So. 
that included all the teams that I just talked about there. And one of the things I realized very quickly is that it's very easy, especially in corporate worlds, to continue to add more things and do more things and run more reports and add more steps to everybody's life. It's very hard to get more people added to do that. It's just eventually everyone starts doing more and more and more and feeling more and more overwhelmed. And so once a year, it was like, let's evaluate everything we're doing. Are there things that we're doing that we should stop doing? And let's actually make a list. Let's come up with things that we can stop doing and stop spending our time on so that, um, you know, that aren't going to hurt the business, but that are going to give, free us up more time to help people feel less overwhelmed. And then are there things that we want to start doing that we feel like we should be doing that we're not? And can we kind of balance out the time to do that? And then obviously, what are the things that we think we need to continue doing? So start, stop, continue a couple of times a year is if you ever are in a position to suggest it, or if you're ever a manager of a team, it's a really good exercise to do because otherwise I think people end up feeling incredibly overwhelmed, can feel very incredibly overwhelmed. Anyway, I kind of have in my head that I have this like desire to do that mental exercise for myself as kind of a start, stop, continue uh, for my channel and try and figure out maybe what 2020 looks like and then I'll probably come back and do another sort of get ready with me, vi get ready with me video and report back out to you guys. So I intend to use some of that time over December to kind of have those kinds of internal monologue kind of conversations, jot down my thoughts, you know, I go out with my husband, but we also really enjoy our, he enjoys going out and playing golf. I go to the spa one, once while I'm out there and then, you know, they have beautiful gardens. And so I love to find these little nooks, shady nooks, cause it's really nice weather out there typically, um, and read and reflect and just kind of decompress from very busy life. So I think that this time out there is going to be a really good time for me to kind of reflect on not only normal life stuff, but like things for my channel too. Let me zoom you in because I'm gonna work on eyes next. All right, for my eyes, I'm gonna use a combination of two things. One, I wanna use this Marc Jacobs palette here that has, it's called their Stiletto palette. It's this very cool toned palette. I've been wanting to play around with um, cool tones lately a lot more. And then I wanted to also pull in this Metalist foil shadow. This is in the shade um, Hollow Mulberry, which has a really interesting um, duochrome sort of flip to it that's absolutely stunning. There you go, I gotta get back by my face because that's where the camera's focusing. So there you go, you can kind of see that holographic shift there. So I wanna use that on my lid and then use some of the mattes and maybe some of the other shimmers in here too. So I think, just so I can keep talking, I'm gonna go in with this lightest shade first and kind of put it underneath my brow bone and then also kind of into the areas where I'm gonna blend a little bit of this darker sort of gray shade, purpley gray shade, and that's gonna be kind of the main matte to kind of ground the look I'm gonna do today. So that is my plan for Phoenix and sort of like talking about or planning and things for my channel. So I'm gonna have not normal content up here in December. I apologize, it's getting so bright here to the side. It is raining and sunny. The clouds have gone away. It's supposed to snow later today. I feel like Ohio is just trying to give me all the weather I can possibly want. Sunny, rainy, gray, cloudy, snowy, all in the span of an afternoon. Welcome to Ohio. There is this hilarious um, shop in downtown Des Moines called Ray Gun. And it's like a screen printing place. They screen print t-shirts as well as like po little postcards and posters and coffee mugs and stuff like that. But whoever runs that group is hilarious. And they have this postcard. I'll see if I can find it and put it here on the screen. But it like has all of the weather for a single week in the Midwest. And if you live in the Midwest, you know how true this is. And it just cracks me the heck up every time I look at it. I actually bought this as a postcard because I was going to frame it and put it on a wall in the house somewhere. I have yet to do that, but I need to. All right, if it is going to be sunny for a while, I'm gonna to need to close that blind. So I think this video is going up on a Monday, is my plan right now. And then if everything kind of works out the way I've kind of sketched it out in my calendar, this Friday is when we actually leave for Phoenix, which is the 20th. And so we leave on the 20th and we will not be back until the 27th. So we're out there for 
full week, um, which will be lovely. And I will get to see my brother-in-law and my nephew out there, which is always a blast. And we hang out and we play board games on Christmas and just generally just hang out and have a super chill day, which is really fun. You know, it's, it's always nice when you really enjoy your family, um, when you enjoy your in-laws and your, um, and you just, in, like, they're people that you would want to hang out with, like you would choose them as friends. You don't, obviously can't pick your family, but it's really nice when your family ends up being people that you would generally just want to hang out and would choose as friends regardless. So anyway, that is the plan. We leave on Friday. And so my intention is I'll have a video up on Friday, but then I am going to take off on my channel for actually two weeks. I thought about just doing it for a week um, because I don't have a lot of time to pre-film anything more than what you're going to get for the end of this week. So I thought I was going to take off one week while we were gone and then when we got back on that Friday the 27th I would just start filming on that weekend and then have new content out on the 30th before New Year's but then it dawned on me that that is when we will have my stepdaughter and I won't have seen her much in the month of December because of some of my travel schedule and I really don't want to come back from Phoenix and go get her and then immediately spend no time with her because I need to come up here and start filming. So I am kind of prioritizing my time with her and I'm just decided that I'm gonna just gonna cut myself a break. Like I, I'm not gonna kill myself trying to fit in everything that I need to fit in and instead I'm going to um, go and just take off two weeks. So for the month of December, I will be taking off sort of the last two weeks on my channel for um, just hanging out with family and enjoying the holidays. And I think if I had less of a crazy schedule, I probably could have pre-filmed and, you know, spread out videos more in the month. But I just, I don't, I don't have the opportunity. I don't always know super far in advance how crazy my schedule is going to be. Oftentimes work trips and even life trips are not like super, super planned out. I don't always know that I'm going to have a big trip in a particular week versus another. And so in November, early November, if you'd asked me if my December looked crazy, I would have been like, no, it's fine. There's not much going on. And then by about the later part of November, I was like, oh boy. So I'm just going back into that darker shade on a smaller brush to sort of concentrate it here in the corner because I don't think I'm going to need, well, maybe we'll pull in a little black. I don't usually pull in black eyeshadow, but we might. Um, so that is my plan for December. And I do have to say, I really like how easily these eyeshadows sort of pick up and blend out. They're a little bit more powdery we are also getting a whole lot smokier than I had planned, but you know what? I haven't done a really good smoky eye in a while, and the key with a smoky eye for me is don't go in with a black, go in with grays, start with a light and fluffy brush, build up the color intensity slowly, and I can often get the kind of smoky eye I like by just blending slowly and adding color, and I do feel like the Marc Jacobs eyeshadow formula really lets you do that in a way that's very easy and approachable or easier than other shadows. So I know not all of you like applying shadows with your finger. I do think that these shadows from Touch and Soul do work best with your finger, but I'm gonna try a flat shader brush. This is dry, just to see if there is an opportunity to pick up this product and apply it without a finger, because I feel like sometimes immediately go in with a finger on these more crumbly eyeshadows and sometimes there is actually an opportunity to apply them. This is just a ColourPop Color flat shader brush. My gut tells me if I wet this brush it might be even easier to use. I don't think these crumbly style eyeshadows apply as well with a brush. Um, let's try... I'm just gonna grab um, some setting spray. 
I just used a little bit of Fix Plus. That's definitely amping up the shine here. Definitely getting that really pretty shift that I think is lovely in this eyeshadow. Probably going to come over and blend out that corner with a little bit more eyeshadow here in a second. Let's just use my finger for the other side so we can see if there is a huge difference. It's such a fun shade. This formula really does stick to your finger as well as your eyes incredibly well without a sticky base, which is one of the things I really like about it. It might have some micro shimmer in it, but no glitter. And so it really just has a little bit of a tack to it that I really appreciate a lot. And I do think that is still a little bit more foiled, not much. But I do think you're getting a little bit more pigment using your finger. I also think it was a little faster, but I also appreciate not everyone has typewriter nails like myself, um, where you're trying to keep your, or at least or I'm trying to keep my nails short so that I'm not clacking on a keyboard, which drives me personally crazy. I always know it's a good shadow when my camera has a hard time focusing on it. All right, so I'm gonna go in with a smaller brush and then just back into that same shade that I've been using as my matte. Pop a little bit more of that in the corner just to kind of bring that definition back, but I don't wanna use a ton of pressure because I'm not trying to move that glitter, sorry, that glitter, that pigment around very much. I'm just trying to deepen up this corner here. I think because my upper lash is so sort of cool toned and smoky, I think I wanna go with a slightly warmer tone on my bottom lash line. So I think, and it's still cool tone, but I'm gonna go with this taupe uh, down here as opposed to the gray I've been using for underneath my lash line. Like I said, it's still very cool toned, but And then I don't always do this, but I think I'm gonna take this black shade down here at the end. I'm just gonna pick it up on a little angled liner brush and I'm gonna put a tiny little bit of this black shadow just in the outer corner here to add a little bit of definition underneath my eyes without having to go in with a stark black liner. It just always feels a little softer to me. And I go through stages, I've gone through stages rather, where I love the look of a black liquid liner and then I go through other stages where I just like the softness of the eyeshadow and it's just adding the tiniest amount of definition here in the corner. I'm going to use a little bit of my Julep One Pencil Matte Gel in the color Clay which is a very sort of nice gray tone. I'm going to add a little bit to the lower waterline just to add a little smoky definition. I'm also going to add some to my upper waterline because I'm not doing a full liner. Now I have not set underneath my eyes at this point, so I'm gonna use a little hourglass veil powder, just the tiniest amount on this tiny, on this little Real Technique setting brush. I'm just gonna pick up a tiny bit, tap up most of it, and then just add a tiny bit here where I can get a little bit of creasing. And I really like this powder because it never really looks drying under my eyes. For the rest of my face, we're going to be using some cream products. Shocking, I know, but I did want to pull in some of the ones that I've been loving a lot this year, and this is definitely one of them. So this is from Milani. This is their Contour and Highlight Duo. I like the highlighter at this end. I love the shade of this contour stick here because I feel like it looks very cool toned on, it probably would look really cool toned on a lot of people, but for me, when I blend this out, yes, it gives me a bit of a contour, but it also ends up kind of, like it's almost more of a bronzer. Like I get a little bit of bronziness that's not orange. And that is a really tough thing for someone with cooler undertones and fair skin to find. I feel like there are not as many contour or cream contour type products or cream bronzer type products that have an undertone that doesn't read quite warm on us. I feel like even though this is marketed as a contour, I feel like because of my cool undertones, this ends up looking 
a lot warmer on me and not ashy at all. Like I just, I feel like that's like a really pretty, it's just a pretty bronzer color on me. So that is the cream sort of contour slash bronzer from Milani. In terms of blush, I wanted to pull in something that was a little pinky toned, not warm, because I was going very cool on my eyes. Um, so I'm gonna use my M Cosmetics. Um, this is the Rose Milk in her blush serum. Um, this is just really easy to work with. And I'm just gonna put kind of one drop on the back of my hand here. That should be enough for both of my cheeks because I do find this is fairly pigmented, but it's also really easy to work with because it's this serum consistency. It shears out a lot thinner than other liquid or cream products I've worked with. So I just kind of put it like that and then I just take a the back of my sponge to kind of diffuse it out. Now I do think this color could be built up, but I do feel like this is definitely the color um, that is gonna be the easiest and most forgiving to work with if you are fair skinned. She has a lot of darker shades or brighter shades that I feel like would work really well for medium to deep. And I've even seen some people with fair skin uh, get away with using them as well because they do sheer out so prettily and can really you know, by tapping them then to with a sponge, you get that really beautiful serum-like effect on the skin. Now, these are quite, I hate to use the word glossy because that implies greasy, but there is a serum texture to these. These are not completely set down at this point. I do like to kind of let them sit on my skin for a little while before I go in and do anything. I could set them with powder right now, but I wanna give them a chance to kind of do their thing. And then we'll go in with some highlighter right now. This is from Charlotte Tilbury. This is her Beauty Light Wand in Spotlight. This is her original color. I'm just gonna dot this on the tops of my cheeks. And I hadn't squeezed any fresh out because I had some still on there from the other day. And once again, take that same sponge and blend it out. This blends into the skin so well, and it's just so fresh and glossy. This one does set down completely on its own. So for those of you who are a little intimidated by liquid highlighters, I feel like this is one that gives you time to work with. I actually do think the applicator helps in sort of the um, this foam applicator or soft touch applicator here at the top really does help to get the product down evenly and it's really easy to work with but then it's not going to budge once it sets. So this will definitely be here at the end of the day. Take a little brush. This is one from Milani. It's their small crease brush and I'm going to pick some up on here and pop it in my inner corners. This also lasts really well as an inner corner highlight. Two last things I wanna do, lipstick, and then we are gonna come back and add just a hint of powder to my face to kind of set things down. For lipstick, I think I wanna go with this. We're gonna try. Uh, Cause I don't know if this is gonna to look too warm with this cool eye, but I wanna try it. So, so this is Velvet Muse from Lisa Eldridge. It's kind of a, it is a little warmy toned, but I feel like it might actually be a nice balance to this very cool toned eye. And I did have some lip balm underneath, which is why you're getting that not completely matte look the way that this lipstick normally looks. I kind of like the juxtaposition. I have to film so many videos today. Maybe we'll come back and change the lipstick look. Keep the outfit and everything the same, but change out the lipstick and see how that sort of changes the look and feel of the things that are on my face. Okay, so at this point, this is still pretty tacky. My skin is nicely set. Like this, I wouldn't worry about where the foundation is, but where the blush was, it's still pretty dewy. Now, I don't mind this level of dew, but I also need to film for quite a while today. So I'm going to pick up a little bit of powder, just a tiny bit, and I'm going to use this little fluffy round brush from Wayne Goss. And I don't want to drag this around my face. So I'm just tapping off all but just the tiniest bit. And I'm just going to kind of start to stamp this without a lot of um, powder on it. And that definitely set it down, but I don't feel like I lost 
all of the shine and gloss sort of on my cheeks in the process either is going to be the finished look. I really like how this came together. I had not used that palette with that hollow mulberry shade before and I kind of like it. It's giving me a very dark smoky eye but in a fun way with a little bit of that duochrome shift that I think is kind of fun and playful. And I do like this sort of warmish lip now that I've kind of stared at it longer. I think that's a nice, it's a beautiful color. I've really enjoyed this color but I think it actually is kind of a fun combination with the more cool tone looks on my cheeks. So, so that is the finished look for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this get ready with me. So thank you guys for all of your support this year and for following me and liking and subscribing and all the things you guys do to support my channel. It means a lot. So anyway, that's all I wanted to say. I just wanted to say thank you for all of the time that you've spent with me this year. I've really enjoyed getting to know many of you guys down in the comments and hope you have an amazing holiday and an absolutely wonderful new year. <laughs>